July 26 of 2020 is the day that my world changed. I was talked into going to a singles class at a church downtown in Houston. I really didn't want to go downtown, but I did anyways. And whenever I show up, of course, you go to a singles class and I had no intentions on meeting anyone because I wanted to be alone for the rest of my life. So I, I walk in and of course they fill you out. What do you do? Where do you work? Who are you? How long have you been divorced? And you know, all the good things, all the facts. And next thing you know, I, I hear them doing the same thing to somebody else I knew that walked in the room. So I turned and looked and I could tell from the corner of my eye that this tall, handsome guy walked in and he's single apparently too, but do not look, do not look because you hate men. <laughs> Don't look. So I just sat there like a robot the whole time. Just like a statue. So I walk in and uh, before I'd walked in, I um, had been looking forward to that day forever. I uh, had been traveling all over the world. I was in Europe and it was time for me to come home. And uh, I was really excited about being able to go to church, have a church family, make some good guy friends and try to create uh, a life uh, here back in Houston. I was just sitting there like this the whole time and when the class was over I just wanted to dart out of the classroom and just go because I don't like men right and so you know um, I'm just sitting there and as soon as it was over by the time I make it to the door it's like oh so Summer and Kyle you guys are new with us today why well, don't I go take you downstairs and show you where we sit as a group and we also go to lunch after church as a group so we get down there and the guys are like Oh, okay, so this is where we sit as a group, and we're going to go have lunch, and Kyle's like, oh, great, okay, and I'm like, okay, well, cool, we can go, and, you know, because at this point, I'm like, okay, I'm not alone, he's handsome, he's tall, but don't look at him, don't look at him like that, but we can go to lunch, and that's it, and so the guy says, well, I'm going to go grab coffee, and he leaves, and he just leaves. So the crazy thing about good old Baptist churches is they focus in an hour and a half, it seems like, between Sunday school and church. And so you have to kill that time. But honestly, that was the quickest 30 minutes of my life because I never felt like we stopped talking. And as I stood there and I was looking at you and we were talking and there was just something about you that came over me. And I was like, I just want to grab her hand and walk her into into church, but then I slapped myself and said that'd be weird. But uh, I, I probably would have slapped you. You probably would have, <laughs> but I felt an instant connection with you. And so I felt it too. I felt like, man, I'm just like here with him, but oh, you hate men, so you're not. And, uh, and then uh, the fun part comes, so this is um, kind of how it starts too. The service is now over, and so we, um, we stand along with the group, with everybody else, all the other singles, and they were so weird. I'm just gonna say, they were <laughs> weird, and I was never going back. Then they gather around, and I'm like, okay guys, so this is where we're going to eat, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'll go. And then they're like, how are you coming? He says, no, I have to go watch baseball with my dad. <laughs> and I'm like, They what? were weird. <laughs> and what happened? What happened? You gave me a look that I see a lot, which yeah. is like, oh, hell no. Yeah. <laughs> you're not. I'm like, you're now I'm going with them alone? Are you crazy? <laughs> By the way, he did not even go see his parents that day. <laughs> I found out after the fact. I couldn't stop thinking about him at lunch. There was this strong tug of, man, he really needs a friend. I don't need to be with anybody right now. I need to be alone. I need to find myself and be alone. I've gone through some hard things, uh, some really, really hard times and had a really hard time with trust. I was like, you know, but there was just something inside of me saying, hey, he needs a friend. He needs a friend after our 30 minutes of talking because we really did connect during that 30 minutes. So I was like, okay, I know his first name. That's it. Not even his legal first name, just his first name, which is technically his middle name. Uh, didn't know his last name. So I'm like, okay, my job as an EA is you're like super detective, like big time. You can figure anything out. So with two keywords, I go on LinkedIn and uh, type in Kyle, and I, I can't remember exactly the second word that I typed in. He was the first person to pop up. And I was like, oh, that's so weird. And I sent him a message. I was like, hey, thanks for leaving me. Leave me hanging. Um, <laughs> found you, I'm pretty much detective for what I do for work, and you look like you need a friend. And I had been through a lot recently and just really wanted to build a home and, and, and make a good group of friends. Did not, not ever think that Houston would become Kingwood, 
and uh, that I would be driving for the first four or five months of our, of our friendship out almost every night to Kingwood. And the thing I love about you and I is we didn't jump into anything. We just built a friendship that built a love, which will build forever. So a few years ago, I was sitting on my driveway and telling my best friend exactly what kind of man I would want. And I laughed and I said, I'm really crazy because I'll always be alone because that was a long list and nobody could ever, there would never be anybody that fit that list. I figured I would just be all alone. And um, now here I am sitting in my wedding dress, so I'm not going to be alone. One of the saddest times, but deeply times that I'd fallen in love with him. My dad was really sick and um, he was diagnosed with severe, severe cancer and spent days with him and evenings holding his hands and Kyle would come with me and he never left my side for that. And my dad asked Kyle to pray with him and Kyle grabbed his hands and he had so much strength and he held tight and my dad was so fragile and Kyle just prayed with him and and that just, it melted my heart and I just, I fell so deeply again there and just let this man be my all. The first time I saw her, it was actually really interesting. I was just coming back to Texas and one of the things when I think about summer is I think about home. I think about, she is my home. She is one of the strongest people I've ever met. Her ability to take on a million different things, deal with them all in a way that feels like it's the only thing on her mind. She was able to pick me up and carry me, but I also feel like I can finally take some of that weight off of her shoulders. I think uh, 10 years from now, you make me cry. <laughs> um, 10 years from now, I, uh, I wanna hold her hand and just tell her we made it. And I wanna walk through a field with her, with our children, and just let her know how much I love her. And we've been through so much, but we were always right there next to each other. We finally can celebrate that peace that we've wanted and that happiness that we have. Well, I'll be your rainy day lover Whenever the sunny days end <laughs> And whatever the weather We have each other And that's how the story will end Well, I'll be your shade tree in summer If you'll be my fire when it's cold and whatever the season, well, we'll keep on breathing Cause we'll have each other to hold And I'll hold you And I'll sing Love will be together when the storms they rise. Well, I'll be right there by your side, and I'll sing. I'm gonna love you forever. I do. I'm gonna spend all of my days with you. Well, carry your burden. I'm gonna spend 
my forever Forever like that